night, so check this out. Boyfriend came home, but it wasn't him. This happened a few months ago, and I've been meaning to post it here, but it honestly freaked me out so bad that I didn't want to write it down for a while. I'm curious about any similar experiences. For some background, I live in a college house that's owned by the college and close to the campus with two of my friends, but my boyfriend has been sort of the unofficial fourth housemate for a while now. He's good friends with many of my friends, and especially the ones who live in the house, so it's safe to say that they know him and they know what he looks like extremely well. This is important for later in the story. Our house is directly next to a big parking lot, which fully lit with streetlights at night, like a grocery store or a mall parking lot, that belongs to one of our college's sports facilities, and it's completely empty about 80% of the time, unless there's a game or a practice. This is where my boyfriend and any friends who come to visit will park when they come over. The night this happened, my boyfriend was at his fraternity house for an event, but was planning to come over to our house afterwards. Just me and one other friend were awake, and we were both sitting together on our front porch, talking, not drinking, or anything of the sort, when we saw my boyfriend's car coming down the road parallel to our house and the parking lot. Now, it's also very important to note that the boyfriend has a very distinct car. It's a foreign car with exterior modifications and an unusual color. And we live in a relatively small town where I still, to this day, have never seen anyone with the same car. I wasn't sure for a second that it was him because he usually calls me on his way home from almost anywhere and he hadn't done that yet. But as his car got closer, and started to turn into the parking lot, I was absolutely certain that it was him. Like I said, the lot is fully lit up at night, so not only did I see the car in full light, but I could also see through the window enough to see that it was him. We thought so much so that it was him that my friend and I got up and started walking to the lot to greet him. She made it there just a moment sooner than I did, and waved at him as he was pulling in, but he only looked at her, and he just kept driving through to the other side of the lot. As it would be in character, we thought surely that he was just messing with us and was going to turn around eventually and come back, but we watched as he pulled out of the parking lot fully and drove down the road in the opposite direction that he came in. I called him right away. I thought, Maybe he left something at the frat house or was just doing a really weird, elaborate, and now slightly annoying bit. When I tell you my jaw dropped when he answered and I could hear from the background that he was still at the frat house because of the music and the people talking, even though I could still see his car driving down the road, I asked him if he had just been home and then left for some reason. He said he hadn't, but he was probably going to leave soon. He asked why, and I just told him that I'd have to explain later, and I hung up. My friend was so freaked out that she didn't want to talk about it and still doesn't like it when I bring it up now. We both saw him, but she definitely got a better look and swears on everything that it was him driving his car. Hell, I know for absolute sure that it was his car. We've had a few other weird experiences in this house that, oddly enough, center around my boyfriend and it's hard to tell if it's more paranormal or a glitch in the matrix, but this one is absolutely glitchy, especially considering that him coming down our road and turning into that parking lot is a routine thing that happens at least 10 times a week. I guess the universe was just ahead by a few minutes that night and played the track of my boyfriend coming home too early.
I went to a store that wasn't real. Many years ago, I was visiting my friends in another country, in Denmark, because they were getting married. I was joined by my mother and her partner. I had to buy a dress for the occasion, so a few days before the wedding, the three of us went shopping on Schroget on Copenhagen. I was really optimistic about finding a dress, but it turned out that most of the shops only really had stuff that I didn't like. The colors that were in fashion that summer were rather dull, in my opinion. It started to rain a lot, and we had been walking around for hours, but I finally noticed a store that I had always liked a lot. It's a chain. And me and my mom went in there while her partner smoked a cigarette under a little vestibule outside of the store. It barely shielded him from the rain, but he was happy to finally be able to have a smoke while we looked around inside. He did that a lot. I'll never forget what we saw inside. The store was full of people, but also the clothes were beautiful. They were almost exclusively in colors that I like, like lots of purple dresses in all shapes and sizes, and skirts that had patterns from gold, purple, and whatnot. I said to my mom that this was definitely what I needed and I would be buying a lot of things, not just one dress, and she agreed. Even though this shop was mostly for younger women, she saw things that she wanted. We both had wet hair and clothes from the rain, so we decided to come back again the day after and go straight to this store because we didn't want to be trying stuff on while wet and we wanted to have lots of time and not leave her partner staying outside for too long. Also, this store, unlike the others that we had been to that day, was full of people. It was on two floors and we could only see the stairs leading to the top floor and glimpsed just a tiny bit of what was up there. But Judging from what was downstairs, we were sure that it was just as great. So we left, we went straight home, and I was giddy with excitement about the next day. I don't like buying clothes for myself, and this was really the only time that I've ever been giddy about clothes shopping. Now, on to the next day. We go straight to this store. It was a bit of a walk from the bus stop, but right away I noticed that something was off. It had the same sign outside, so it was definitely the same place. A drugstore that I had visited before going in there was still across the street, but there were some things that didn't look the same. I shook off the feeling and went in, really excited, as was my mom, but inside the store... There was nothing but the same dull stuff that was in every other shop that year. Boring colors. And it looked completely different in every way. I remember my mom's disappointment. She ran up to the woman that was working there and asked if they had changed everything overnight. And she was like, no, we only bring new stuff in once a week. There was no second floor either. Literally, nothing looked the same inside. We had to face facts that we weren't going to be seeing any of those beautiful clothes again. One other thing that we noticed after coming back out was that the vestibule that my mom's partner had stood under while smoking in the rain wasn't there anymore. I've often wondered about this and... Me and my mom used to talk about it a lot, and she was sad about it for years. She's really into clothes. It's probably the only time that me and her bonded over clothes before. And I wonder what would have happened if we had bought anything there from the day before. And is stuff like this possibly happening more than we think? I've only ever heard of one similar story where a guy working in Iran went to a really nice dinner in a mountain village 
that was on the second floor over a gas station. Everyone he worked with said that he was making it up because it made no sense that a fancy diner would be operating in such a remote place, but he took them there one day, really excited to show them that he was right, and then when they get to this particular village, which looked the same as most others in the area, everything looks just as he remembers, the same gas station, but there's no second floor. He remembered it being the best dinner that he had ever had, and it was so cheap that he couldn't believe it. I can still vividly remember the interior of the store and the beautiful clothes that I saw that day. I would describe them as dreamy. Another thing that made this store different from all the others was that it was full of people. There are lots of clothing stores on Stroget, and none of them had been particularly busy that day. Far from it, in fact. Then why would this one have been so crowded and full? Anyway, this is one of the strangest things that's happened to me. I was making a list of stuff like this while watching the TV show Dark with my husband. He thinks that strange stuff is always happening to me, but he agreed that this was probably the strangest. And the fact that my mother experienced it too, and her partner who doesn't believe in anything supernatural, makes it impossible to deny. There are several people in the comments wishing that the OP would have purchased even some sort of accessory while they were there the first day. What would have happened to those accessories the next day? Would they still be in our timeline? Would they have vanished? The questions go on and on, and the speculation goes even further. One commenter says that maybe she was able to see into an alternate reality, or some sort of dimension jump which is wild to think about. Even more wild is somebody responds to that comment with, you know, there have been several such stories just like this in this subreddit, and maybe there are some missing persons that are actually living in these alternate timelines. Hmm. boyfriend and I lost an entire day. In 2014, I was living with my then boyfriend and working debt collections for a pretty well-known company. I hated the job and had begun feeling like my day-to-day -day life was really mundane. Because we had access to people's sensitive information, like full socials, addresses, etc., we weren't allowed to even bring our phones into the building. Once a month, they would put us on required overtime when we were working on accounts that were getting ready to go into the next phase of collections. I worked from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. Monday and was scheduled 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday and Wednesday. I got home from work Monday night and I watched Netflix with my boyfriend until I fell asleep. I woke up the next day to pee, and when I checked the time, it was 8.13. I assumed that I just forgot to set an alarm. I freaked out for a minute and rushed to get ready for work. I pulled into the parking lot at 8.56 and was feeling pretty good about still making it to work on time. As I was clocking in, my coworker Anna stopped me and asked, where were you yesterday? I said, uh, here? And she insisted I wasn't, which I thought was really weird, but I just brushed it off. And clocked in, and I went to my desk. Anna and I were pretty close as far as co-workers go. We bitched about the job throughout the workday and texted slash engaged with each other on social media outside of work daily. About 20 minutes into my shift, I glanced at the calendar on my computer and it was showing that it was Wednesday. I genuinely thought that Anna was playing a weird prank on me 
and had messed with my computer settings since she asked where I was when she knew full well I was there yesterday. On my lunch break, I went out to my car as I did every shift, and when I turned my phone on, it also said that it was Wednesday. I started panicking, and I called my boyfriend. He worked second shift and hadn't gone into work, but he looked at his phone and had the same realization, and also started to freak out. Now, the really weird thing is, no one in either of our lives seemed to notice except for Anna. I wasn't super hungry or thirsty as I would assume I would be if I hadn't consumed anything for an entire day. We were both heavy smokers at the time, but neither of us woke up feeling like we needed a cigarette. We lived with my boyfriend's two brothers, and we had two dogs. One was an elderly dog, and the other was just a puppy, so they both required pretty frequent trips outside. Our room was in the basement, and we had a baby gate at the top of the stairs to keep the dogs from roaming the house while we were sleeping. Neither of the dogs had an accident in our room, nor did they eat as though they hadn't been fed in over 24 hours. I asked both of his brothers, and they hadn't let the dogs out or fed them at all on Tuesday. I'm really close with my mom, and we talk on the phone on my way to and from work every day. Yet, she didn't mention anything about not talking to me for an entire day. Neither my boyfriend or I were written up for no call no showing a shift or even spoken to by management about the missed shift. Neither of us had any missed calls or texts from Tuesday. And to this day, I have no reasonable explanation for what happened that caused us to lose an entire day. If I had been living alone, I would have chalked it up just to somehow being so exhausted or maybe having a weird 24-hour illness or something that made me sleep through a whole day. But the fact that both of us experienced the same thing with no consequences made it even weirder. I think about this regularly and no one I've spoken to about it can come up with anything plausible either. It feels as though we went to sleep Monday, ceased to exist in this reality on Tuesday, and then resumed normal life on Wednesday. A curious person in the comments asked, Was Tuesday on your paycheck? OP responds with, No, it was not. Another commenter says, so, you're saying that you didn't get paid for Tuesday, right? Did you find out if your boss got a call from you saying that you weren't going in on Tuesday? Your supervisor is someone above you who would have mentioned that you were no call, no show, right? OP responds with, if I had called off, I would have gotten paid for that day. I had plenty of PTO still available. So, this person just didn't exist on a random Tuesday and no one said anything except for Anna. I think I saw the future. So I live in a city. Me and my wife sell stuff online and every morning I have to walk to the drop off office. On my way to and from that place, I pass in front of this barber shop. It's one of those modern places where everything is so very manly. Anyway, like a year ago, I went there for a haircut. I had visited the place three times before and I was okay with the results, and so I kept going. One time, I had a very upsetting interaction with one of the guys there. He cut my hair and kept asking me a bunch of weird questions, like if I had tried drugs, where I lived, how many kids I had, and a bunch of other personal information. I obviously gave him nothing, but it was so awful that every time I passed in front of that place, I looked inside to see if the guy was still there. 
It became a habit to look inside every day. So about nine months ago, I looked inside and everything was uninstalled. The mirrors, the workstations, the counter, the TV, the furniture, all of it. They were moving out and the whole place was chaos. I didn't think much of it. Maybe the business wasn't good enough. It happens. So, next day, I take my usual path and lo and behold, the barber shop is there, up and running like every other day. And there was no signs of anything that I saw the day before. Nothing at all. It's bugged me for months. I thought about it every time I took the path. There's no way that they put everything back in place in less than 18 hours. So, last week the place was being moved, for real, and I saw again exactly what I saw 10 months ago. Only this time, it really happened. They closed the barbershop. What just happened? This experience really made me think I was going crazy. I work for a popular coffee and donut shop chain, and on this particular day, I was really busy serving a lineup of customers at the storefront. We were short-staffed, so I was handling the line all by myself when I ran out of cream in my cream machine. I didn't have time to go to the back to grab a new bag of cream, so when the baker came out front to stage some new donuts, I asked if she would run to the fridge and bring me out a new bag of cream while I continued to serve the customers. She brought me the bag of cream, set up the hopper, and put it in the machine for me. All I had to do was cut the hose. So, at the front of the house, we only used the lime green colored scissors and at the back of the house slash kitchen, we only use black handled scissors for food prep. Is usually one or two pairs of the lime green scissors at my station at storefront. Our countertops are black, so lime green scissors really stand out on them. You can't miss them. Additionally, we keep a very clean and organized counter area so there really is nothing else on the countertops except for the machines, cups, lids, stirring spoons, and the scissors. I reach my hand under the brewing stand to grab the scissors, and they aren't there. I check all around the storefront area, anywhere that I thought scissors may be, and nothing. So, I asked the baker if she wouldn't mind grabbing me a pair of scissors to cut the bag of cream. When she came back, she handed me a pair of black-handled scissors. I know this for certain because I immediately thought to myself, these are the wrong scissors to be up here. We never use black ones out front. They're meant for food prep. But because she's a baker and does all the food prep, she automatically grabbed black ones. I didn't mention this to her at all. Being in a hurry and needing that cream open, I thought, screw it. I'm using the black ones and I'll put them in the dishwasher as soon as I have a moment. I get through the line of customers, maybe four to five minutes have passed, and I start to wipe down and sanitize my counter area. No other staff members have come up front to my area of the store. Everyone else was working drive through As I'm wiping everything down, I discover not one, but two pairs of lime green handled scissors right there underneath the brewer stands. The very first place that I had looked for them. And the black scissors were nowhere to be found. I was so confused. I thought that maybe I had misremembered, so... I immediately went to ask the baker what color the scissors were that she brought me. She told me that she had brought me the black ones. I then asked if she had taken them back and switched them out with the green ones, 
and she said, no? She was just as confused as me. I then went around asking everyone if they had brought two pairs of green scissors up to the front, and they all said they hadn't. So, to summarize, one pair of black scissors turned into two pairs of bright green scissors, and I still don't know what happened to the black pair. I felt like I was losing my mind. Anyone else have something happen like that? Somebody in the comments asked, is it possible you didn't feel in the right spot for the green scissors underneath the brewer stands the first time? And that you put the black scissors down somewhere weird or they fell somewhere? I know it doesn't feel like that's what happened, but is it possible? OP responds with, I wish that were the case. The brewer stands a good six to seven inches off the counter and there's literally nothing else underneath them. Just empty counter with a backing so there's no way for them to fall anywhere and damn near impossible to have missed two bright green pairs of scissors. I do know that I put the black scissors that I used under the stands where I would have normally put the scissors and that area was empty under there when I did that. You'd think I'd have a big pile of scissors. It's just so odd. I experienced my first glitch at Walmart today. I went shopping for my husband for a pouch that he can use for his new trimmer and attachments. I was looking through the bags that were next to the travel-sized items and I picked up one black bag that was fairly cheap. I opened it and looked inside and there was white crumpled up paper in it. I zipped it back and continued looking in a different area to see if I could find something else. When I exhausted my efforts and haven't moved this bag from my hands at all, or picked anything else up for that matter, I went to unzip the same bag again, but I couldn't. It had a plastic tab holding the zipper in place so you couldn't open it. But I had just opened the same bag a few minutes prior. I stared at the bag for a good few seconds before deciding, hey, screw it, I'm getting it. So I bought it, went to my truck, and took the tab off and... Lo and behold, white paper. Now, I'm sitting in the truck, wondering what the cinnamon checks just happened, and I just had to share this with everyone. Just a mind-perplexing situation. We've all misplaced the remote before, but... Did you have FaceTime proof? I was benching the last three episodes of a series today, and before the last episode started, I ran to the bathroom and came right back. I went to grab my remote and it wasn't on the couch. Okay, no big deal. I fluffed out my blanket, checked between the armrests and cushions, which is where it always falls, I checked behind the cushions, under the couch, nothing. I checked the bathroom, the kitchen, the other living room. I checked outside on the patio, still nothing. I'm a freak, so I FaceTimed my mom and my brother. They were together. And I asked them to be my second pair of eyes, as, you know, moms can find anything. They thought I was crazy, but I showed them with my hands running between the cushions and checking everywhere in my house. My cushions don't come off the couch, and I can only stick maybe four inches of my hand in there before I'm hitting crumbs. My brother even said, man, that's weird. However, my mom said, just sit down and calm down and you'll find it. Right when she said that, I put my hand down, and just like that, it was right between the cushion and the armrest. It was even visible. 
I felt the biggest chill crawl up my spine that scared me so bad I started ugly crying. My mom thought it was hilarious, but my brother could tell that something wasn't right. He watched me stick my hand there multiple times. This happened last night. I'm not sure if this belongs here, but I'll give it a shot. Last night, my husband and I went to dinner. He's a bit of a jokester, so he likes to hide my things or move them around. As we get to the restaurant, I noticed that he wasn't wearing his glasses and I commented on that. He pulled them out of his shirt pocket and laughed. On to after sitting down. I was looking at his glasses and I commented that they were his old ones and I asked if he was trying to be funny. He insisted that they were his newer ones that he's had for two years. I then took off my glasses and I noticed that they were my old ones as well, ones that I hadn't worn for three years at this point. I started to question him and asked him why he would do that, but he insisted that he didn't do anything. I spent the better part of 10 minutes trying to get him to confess, finally realizing to pull out my phone and look through the selfies and pictures with him. Wouldn't you know it, he was right. What the heck happened? Somebody in the comments adds this addendum. At this point, OP realized that they did not even have a Reddit account, nor the internet, and there was a faint and quiet little as the universe vanished. <laughs> I think my face might be a glitch. We cannot figure this one out. So, I'm part of a fairly large friend community consisting of smaller core groups of friends, and we all plan big events together. I state this to make it clear that I see these people regularly. Someone, please give me a scientific explanation for what's going on. My friend and I are constantly mistaken for each other. To the point where, when it started, we thought it was cute and funny. But it's been going on for so long, and keeps happening more and more, that it's just old now, and it's starting to freak me out. Now bear with me, as I'm not capable of telling a short story. One would think that we surely must look alike, right? Well, not really. I don't think our faces look anything alike and people agree with me. I'm a 39-year-old female, mid-length hair, brunette, and have a very colorful sleeve. Her, let's call her Betty B, is a 33-year-old female, long blonde hair, and has individual black and gray tattoos all over. We're about the same height, but with a different build. It makes absolutely no sense, but if we're at an event, someone will think that we're the other person, minimum, at least once. And some of these people know us very well. I've had a full 15-minute conversation with a friend one night at a party before I realized that she thought she was talking to Betty B. It's almost getting worse, too. It's starting to happen to some of our close friends. Now, to give some context, in the run of a weekend camping trip with a bunch of friends, this happened to me three times. I've known most of these people for over eight years, and I brought her into the community about six years ago. With the two of us, it goes both ways. It gets even weirder. There's another female friend, Let's call her Batty D. She's a 36-year-old female, similar height, long, darker blonde hair, 
full colored sleeves and hands too, and a more curvy body than mine. Makes me wish I was this one. Anyway, I don't think we look alike in the face either, except maybe with a similar shape of face. We're not as close, so people don't mix us together as much, but people have also been mistaking me for her for almost 10 years. Even two of her boyfriends have thought that I was her at one point. People thinking that I'm Batty D actually makes more sense than mixing up me and Betty B. One more example. My whole life, I've had this feeling that people don't remember my face, so I always reintroduce myself. Despite having a large personality, I've been told that I'm hard to forget, which checks out. I'm fun, loud, and adorable. We were throwing a big fundraiser event where everyone dressed up. I had a killer outfit and added a long braid extension to my ponytail. Only once that night was I mistaken for my friend, but I would say about 60% of my friends didn't know who I was. It was the strangest experience. Imagine going to a party full of your friends and over half of them don't recognize you. Makes no sense. I was wearing makeup, but I mean, not any more than normal. All my friends who did recognize me couldn't believe that others couldn't. I found out later that I had in-depth conversations with friends and they thought that they were talking to some randoms. They didn't realize it until all the photos of the event were posted and then they saw me with my partner. That was the night that I realized I should have been a spy and I feel bad for calling Superman's disguise stupid. If you made it this far, thank you. This person includes an edit that says, I've never heard of face blindness before, but I think this definitely plays a part. The majority of us are neurodivergent, myself and a bunch of us have ADHD, and I think a lot of people are on the autism spectrum. I'm also thinking now that people associate us as a package because at one point we lived together and I was the one who introduced her to the whole group so for a period of time whenever people saw her she was with me. This doesn't make sense for some people but I think about it a lot. I think there's also just got to be something about my face that I can look very different depending on how I do my hair or my makeup stuff like that. It's all still very strange and will remain a mystery, but those are the conclusions that I've come to. Nintendo DS Glitch in the Matrix Hey dude, I just found your podcast and I'm binging every episode now. Time slips and glitches in the matrix are some of my favorite things and I had one a few months ago that I haven't been able to shake and that I wanted to share. I am, like most 90s kids, very nostalgic when it comes to gaming systems and Pokemon. I bought myself a Nintendo DS last year with several Pokemon games to use when I want to decompress. Earlier this year, I had to go to the DMV to get some things taken care of and had grabbed my Nintendo DS so I could play it while I was waiting for my time to go to the counter. However, when I arrived at the office, I had a second thought of not wanting to be judged being a 30-year-old woman bringing an old gaming console into the DMV. So I took my DS out of my purse and I placed it on the passenger seat. I did my business and drove home. Later in the evening, I realized that I didn't grab my gaming console, so I went out to my car to go grab it, and it's not there. I did a thorough inspection of my purse and any other items that I may have had on me when I came home from the DMV, 
It was absolutely nowhere in sight. Upset, I gave up searching for it after two weeks when I pretty much searched every crevice, pocket, and corner in my home for the device. Now, this part of the story may seem like it doesn't fit, but it does. About a month after the incident, I was cleaning out some old furniture and clutter, just trying to get some spring cleaning done. We have these two square cloth ottomans that have lids where you can lift it up and store items in there. They were starting to rip at the bottom, so they were no longer useful, so I was emptying their contents out so that they would be empty and we could still use them as footrests. Everything was out of those two ottomans, and I remember this because I found several of my daughter's library books that they couldn't find in there as well as two old MacBooks that my husband had been looking for to trade in for credit. Now, flash forward an additional three months. The incident of the DS has long left my mind as my husband had surprised me with the Nintendo Switch for my birthday. I was looking for some items in the living room and thought maybe my daughters had put them inside the old ottomans that I had cleared out because it had been used as a storage place for quite some time. I go to the ottomans and I open them up. And right there is my Nintendo DS. I was so freaked out. I turned it on immediately and went to my last saved game of Leaf Green. And sure enough, there I was, standing outside of the most recent gym that I was going to battle. I asked my husband if he had seen it or found it and put it back in the ottoman for me. When he saw me holding it, he was just as freaked out as I was, and he said, Didn't you clean both of those ottomans out? I told him, Yeah, I, I thought I did. He said, No, you definitely cleaned them out because we found those MacBooks that I wanted to use for trade-in credit. The DS has been sitting on the TV stand for the last three months because... I really just freaked out at its reappearance. I don't even want to play it again. I think the lesson here is never be afraid of being judged for what you like. Speaking of being a 90s kid, I want to talk to you about a newsletter called The 92. If you're a fan of 90s nostalgia, whether it's the TV shows, the movies, the music, or the toys that we grew up with, The 92 has you covered. It's delivered straight to your email inbox every Thursday afternoon, and it's packed with deep dives, fun facts, and exclusive throwback content that's curated just for people like me and you. If you want to receive The 92, sign up by clicking the very top link in the description of this episode and thank me later. Ironic that I found a post in this sub today of all days. I actually just clicked a link to post in this sub, the one about the guy whose closet disappeared. Then I realized the sub I was in. I experienced a glitch today and it got me feeling shook. Still, and it's been all day. My ID has been missing for a couple of weeks. I remember the last time I saw it. I assumed that I'd just stuffed it in my pocket and I'd find it in the laundry. On two separate occasions, I've had someone witness me looking in my wallet and not having it. Once, out with a friend, and once at the front desk at a new doctor's office. I looked in my car, the laundry, my dresser. I don't carry a purse lately, so not there. And the ID pocket with the window in my wallet has been empty. Again, multiple people have seen this. It's not just me. Well, today, I went to grab my health insurance card, then I noticed my car insurance card is in the little window pocket where my ID would be. 
Hmm. Weird. I grab it to put it in the right pocket, and my ID is there, right where I've looked several times for it. I'm 100% sure no one in my house did this, and I'm honestly just flabbergasted. That's it. That's the story. Things like this have happened to me sometimes, but I've never, like, blatantly had so many witnesses and been so positively sure that something wasn't there when it was. Strange Museum Encounter Time Traveler Hey guys, I've never really read this subreddit and, to be honest, have never really contemplated much of what I'm about to say, but it's an odd experience that I keep thinking about. I work in a popular museum in the UK, which requires me to roam around specific attractions and talk about the history and genuinely make sure that all the visitors are safe. However, I had a very strange moment with a pair of visitors. As they entered the area that I was in, they didn't stop looking at me. Even though they had audio guides for the exhibit, there was no real reason for them to make as much eye contact with me as they did. They were a couple, maybe mid-30s, and I myself am 25. And I don't know, I just presumed that they must have a question that they were working out how to ask. So I went over to them and said hello. They were very friendly with me, but the smiles they gave were super emotional. It honestly felt like they weren't listening to what I was saying, but just me talking. I don't know. I can't put it into words, but it was very intense. They seemed very happy just to listen to me, but their facial expressions didn't change when I was speaking. It was just very, like, over-emotional. I managed to tell them about the exhibit, give them some information, but their eyes, in both of them, were beginning to tear up. I mean, I genuinely thought that they just must be going through something, and they were just being polite and hearing me out, but here's the kicker. After talking to them for about five minutes, every time I went to leave, they'd ask a random question and, again, continue just listening whilst also being very melancholic with me. I started to feel a bit off, but my break was coming up, so I said goodbye and I began to leave. This is where both of them thanked me and then also thanked me by my name. Then they both left. They didn't even look around the exhibit properly. They just moved on, teary-eyed. Here's the thing too. I don't introduce myself with my name at work. We don't share each other's names and yes, we do have name tags, but I haven't ever put mine on as I don't want people knowing my name. I like that boundary. To this day, I have no clue why they were both so emotional and how they both knew my name. They left briskly and they both looked like they were about to cry. I have, until this moment, never gave anything a thought, but this is a genuinely unexplainable situation. I've never met them in my life and... I know all my relatives. I just can't put into words the constant feel of sadness and bittersweet that was given off by them as they sort of spoke to me. Now, I know I've not given my name. My colleagues haven't and I wear nothing with my name on, so that's the part that made me think what this interaction can be. I'm just wondering if anyone else has had any similar experiences. Somebody in the comments suggests something that makes a lot of sense. They say, They asked one of your coworkers a question, and your coworker said, Our guide, so and so, in the next room, 
can answer any questions that you might have on the exhibit. Then, when they saw you, you looked remarkably like someone that they might have lost. As for your co-workers saying that they didn't tell anyone your name, maybe they just said it without thinking, and so they don't remember doing it. Or, maybe they're too embarrassed to admit that they told someone your name because they know that you don't like giving it out. My social security card was stolen out of my room eight years ago and came back last week. I came home from work one day and I kept it inside a safe in my closet. I noticed that my room had been torn apart. The safe was busted open. This was one of those cheap key Walmart type safes, nothing major. And the first thing that I noticed was that my social security card was gone. I was so confused because I lived with roommates at the time, and those roommates were like family to me. I never suspected it was something that they would have done. I eventually found out that it was one of my roommate's brother. He was visiting the house for a few days and had a history of trouble. I knew it had to be him. This is the weird part. I confronted the brother of my roommate one night about it, and he was shocked and upset when I did. He admitted to me that he took it and said he was sorry. I asked him why he did it, and he said he was involved in a scamming ring and thought I would be an easy target. He then said that he felt so bad about taking my personal information that he panicked and threw it into a sewer drain to get rid of it all. I was upset that he did this, but I moved past that and years went by. About two weeks ago, I was cleaning out my book bag that I use daily. I have two of my older wallets inside there and random school IDs and other things. Now, note, I have thoroughly checked these wallets many times in the past eight years and have never seen my social security card in there. So I pulled these wallets out and wanted to check to see what was still inside them. I pulled a stack of school IDs out and behind them was my actual social security card that I thought had been stolen and missing for the past eight years. I probably wouldn't have thought anything of it after finding it, although I have checked the wallet many times and the person who stole my card from me admitted that he did and apologized, saying he threw it into a sewer drain. Just interesting to me, and I wanted to share with you. Encounter Submission They all said I was crazy, that it was all in my head, but I know what I saw. I was at a college party with my two friends, I'll just call them Laura and Ryan, and you know how college parties go, everyone usually ends up dead drunk at the end. Ryan was heading home with his girlfriend, so me and Laura decided to go back to my place. On the way back to my house, I kid you not, I see someone in my apartment window. I pointed out to Laura, so we rush up the stairs, and when we get to the front door, it's unlocked and cracked open. We searched through the entire apartment, and nothing. So Laura ends up going home, and I notice that my cat Nibbles is gone. He's an outdoorsy cat, so I didn't think much of it, and I stayed up for a few hours, smoking playing games. Around 5 a.m., I decide to hit the hay, but when I open my bedroom door, this pungent, disgusting odor hits me strong in the face, and when I pull back my covers, I see my cat laying there. I screamed and ran out of my apartment. My neighbors came out of their rooms and 
Even the landlord came to see what the commotion was all about. And then when I say someone killed my cat and that it's in my bed, they go to check, but nothing's there. No odor, no body, no blood. People always say that it was a hallucination because of the weed and the alcohol, but that doesn't explain why my cat never showed up again. I'm starting to begin to think that I'm going crazy as well. I still have nightmares about that person that I saw in the window and what they did to Nibbles. Who does that to a cat? I'm now 29 years old with a wife and one kid. We also have a cat and he looks exactly like Nibbles except their eyes are different colors. And our new cat always reminds me of Nibbles in that night. I'm guessing that I'll have to just go to the grave knowing that nobody ever believed me. Huge weird air duct appeared on the wall right next to the entrance of my apartment building. So I live in this building for six years now. My wife, even longer, 11 years. A few days ago, when I came back from work, I noticed this huge air duct right next to the entrance of the building. At first, I thought they just installed it that day, so I got up close and I checked. But after some closer inspection, it became clear to me that the duct was in fact old and dusty. So I took a photo and because it was late and my wife was asleep, I also went straight to bed. The next day, I showed the picture to my wife and I asked her if that air duct has been there all those years because I thought it's weird that I just noticed it yesterday after years of living in that building. She gave me this puzzled look and thought that I was messing with her. She said that she's never seen that air duct before and that she didn't believe me. She instantly went down to check and came back with a very puzzled look on her face. There are a total of 11 entryways into the building, and none of which has an air vent like that installed. And so for the past six years for me, and 11 years for my wife, we walked past that every single day and never noticed it. My chest piece keeps disappearing, and I don't know why. I'm a 23-year-old female, and I live with my husband, a 31-year-old male, and our dog. We have a chest set where the board folds in half and holds the pieces inside, with each piece having a respective slot so you can easily see if one is missing. The board latches and locks when closed. We play often and never lost a piece until this happened, apparently. We're both very particular about taking care of things that we have and we would never, ever have put the game away without all of its pieces. Some additional information. The dog does not chew things or steal things and we're the only ones who have ever used the board. A few months ago, we opened it up to play after just playing a couple of days prior, and one pawn was missing. We were so confused because, like I said before, we would never put the game away with a piece missing. We searched the house up and down for the missing piece, even beyond the area that it reasonably should have been, and we never found it. We would just use things like a bottle cap or a coin in place of the missing pawn. Well, we just recently moved, and we packed everything ourselves. The missing piece was still nowhere to be found. Cut to today. Shortly after moving and getting everything unpacked, the chess set has been closed and latched, packed in a box. Today, we opened it to play for the first time in our new place since we've moved in, and now two pawns are missing. I'm literally having some sort of existential crisis. 
because this is just not possible. Anyway, I had to tell somebody about this, so I thought I'd post it here. Maybe it's a glitch in the Matrix. Maybe my chess set is haunted. Maybe I have a secret stalker who sneaks in and steals my chess pieces. Who knows? Mysterious banana peel and clock setting. This happened about 10 years ago, but the daylight savings post from earlier jogged my memory. My husband, my infant daughter, and I lived together in a small apartment. We had a clock on the wall in our living room that we never adjusted for daylight savings time. It had been an hour off for months. Rather than changing it, we just joked about it all the time. We rarely relied on the analog clock anyway. Plus, eventually, it would be correct again. One day, I got home from a morning outing with my daughter, and I noticed that a banana peel was in the hall on the floor. This was very strange because we didn't have any bananas in our house. In fact, we never did. I was quite startled. I sent a text to my husband, and I asked him if he stopped by home during his shift and maybe dropped a banana peel on the floor. He said he most certainly did not. We checked our ring doorbell footage, and no one had come into our apartment. I cleaned it up, and I was feeling uneasy. I packed a diaper bag for my daughter so that we could leave for the afternoon. But before we walked out the door... I glanced at our clock, and the time was correct. It had been adjusted for the time change. I was startled. I even checked my phone to be sure, and sure enough, the clock had been adjusted. I grabbed my daughter and her bag, and we left. Once we got safely to the car, I messaged my husband to ask if he had adjusted the clock, but I got the same answer. He did not. When we got home that evening, my husband thought that I had just been messing with him. But I still can't explain what happened. My husband is not a practical joker, and this would be a very weird joke to play anyway. I always felt like this was just a little glitch in the Matrix. Either that, or something more sinister, but my brain prefers the former. No one remembers my cousin owning a Bentley, including my cousin. This subreddit just popped up on my feed and weirdly coincides with this bizarre scenario. I attended a family funeral last week, attended by uncles, aunties, and cousins that I haven't seen for some decades. I saw my cousin, he's a director of a communication company, and I haven't seen him for probably close to a decade now. The last time I saw him, which was also for a funeral, he owned a distinctive cream-colored Bentley with a red interior. I remember talking to him at length about it, and I vividly remember two of my brothers being there for the conversation. The same two were also at this most recent funeral. I asked him if he still owned his Bentley, and he looked confused and said that he's never owned one in his life and that he only liked owning Jaguars, which is what he was indeed driving the day of this most recent funeral. I was confused, but I didn't push it. Later, I asked my brothers, thinking that my cousin was frankly just lying to me. He's a bit of a Flash Harry type character. They also said that they have no idea what I was talking about despite the fact that I can recall us talking around the car clear as day. I thought maybe it was a different person, possibly until I remembered that my cousin gave me his business card by the car and also one the other day. I dug out the old card that I have with all my business cards, and they're identical. So what the heck is going on? I can't stop thinking if this was some sort of parallel universe merging with our own, or what?
The magic keychain. What is the consensus on this type of thing? The following happened to me about two years ago. I rented an Airbnb for my kid and myself for a week. When we got there, I put the code in for the key box and opened it. There was a key on the keychain ring inside the box. I tried to quickly throw it on my own key ring, but I couldn't get it on. So I thought to myself, I need to attach this to my car keys because I'm prone to misplacing things, but this key ring is a pain in the butt. So my plan was to open the house door and immediately put the key in my pocket just for the time being. Once I got all my stuff in, I could then focus on getting the house key on my personal key ring. So I made sure to put it in my pocket because I didn't want to somehow accidentally lock myself out while I brought our luggage in. I finished putting the luggage in and my kid and I wanted to go eat some dinner. I went to lock the door and I couldn't find the house key in my pocket. I checked all of my pockets multiple times. I checked the key box. I checked the car. Nothing. I go back into the house and I look at the table and the key and the ring are both sitting there separately. Now, if they were still attached, I would just think that it was weird that I took it out of my pocket when I had no reason to and then just forgot in the commotion of getting situated. But it would have taken continued effort to detach the key from the key ring that it was on. This was one of those key rings that are hard to pry off. I'm really in disbelief. I go to grab my phone from the car to take a picture of them on the table and text my friend the weird thing that just happened. I get my phone, I go back to the table, and the key and the ring are still there, but now they're attached again. I don't know. I have no explanation for this. I asked my kid about the whole thing, and she said that she wasn't paying attention and had no idea the key even existed. Later. I told my therapist about it and she suggested to make sure that if something like that happens again, to go to a neurologist to make sure that I wasn't blacking out or having some sort of weird seizure issues. I guess, luckily, it hasn't happened again. And that was the only weird thing that week that happened while we were there. I mean, I misplace stuff all the time, but this is one time that I know it wasn't just me being absent-minded, and I wonder how many instances that I've blamed on myself that really weren't my own doing. Anyway, what do you think are the most popular theories with these types of scenarios, other than just me losing my mind? My dog spawned in my house. This happened today. I was in my living room, studying, and my dog was outside scratching at the sliding glass door to get in. Now for some reference, I was home alone and I'm on my iPad studying when I get a phone call from my boyfriend. I pick up and we're talking and I mention to him that my dog wants to get in and is scratching at the back door. I was waiting to finish my conversation on the phone before I let my dog in and get ready to take him for a walk. Then, I notice that my dog walks away from the back door as if he got bored of waiting for me to let him in and went to go explore the backyard some more. All of a sudden, I hear my dog walking from the opposite side of the house, not from the living room or where the sliding doors are located, and my cat is running towards him. My cat is an indoor cat, and she's really desperate to go outside. So, at that moment, I thought maybe he was able to slide open the sliding doors from the kitchen. I don't, I don't even know how he would do that. And then I thought that my cat is probably speeding in that direction right now to make her escape. Once I get there, I get this eerie, sinking feeling. The sliding doors are closed. They're locked. All the doors in the house are locked, all the windows are closed, but my dog, 
got inside the house without me letting him in. I was drawing on my tablet while having a quick conversation with my boyfriend. My cat sensed something as well. Because she only goes to sniff my dog if he's been outside or if she thinks that she might get a chance to slip through the door. I don't know how to explain this. My family thinks that I had some kind of lapsus and just forgot that I let him inside. But I was definitely on the phone with my boyfriend and he would have heard the door and my dog if I had let them in while on the phone. Plus, I verbally mentioned out loud that I'd be letting him in later when I was ready to walk him. The universe sent my husband's wedding band back. Hey all, I love glitch stories and finally I have one to share. A few weeks ago, on a Wednesday, my husband came home midday and told me that he lost his wedding band somewhere. This wasn't a big surprise. He had lost weight in his hands and the band was beginning to become super loose. He's lost it before. I was cleaning and reorganizing our room. We did a cursory look, but we didn't find it. I sent a message in the roommate's group chat and we figured it would show up again eventually, as it always did. This is some important information. That Wednesday, I was cleaning and reorganizing specifically a dresser by our bed. My husband uses this as a nightstand and he keeps his medicine there. I moved the bottles several times and even knocked them over. Anyway, jump to late Friday night. My husband goes to take his evening meds and his wedding band is there in one of the caps of his meds. Picture those big orange RX bottles with the deep white caps that you can flip over and make like a cup. This cap was flipped and it was sitting in the cup part. My husband goes, oh, where'd you find my ring? I said I didn't and I look at him and now he's confused but he tells me where he found it. I said, I don't know, maybe our roommates had found it? Let me go ask. So I did, and the four other adults and the five kids in the house, I asked them all if they had found it and then put it there. But nobody had. No one had even been in our room. There was also only two instances in that time that neither of us were home for very short amounts of time. I also want to just reiterate that I had moved those same bottles Wednesday back and forth while cleaning. And this medication is one that he takes twice a day. So he had looked at that bottle Wednesday night, twice on Thursday, and on Friday morning. Also, it was found in the only med cap that was flipped. And it was in the only med that he has to take so often. So a guaranteed spot, he would find it quickly. The whole household was mystified. Also, I've now bought him a new wedding band of the correct size. Ghost Neighbor I had come back up to my apartment because I forgot something and I swear I saw my neighbor walk into my suite. I saw her come out of her boyfriend's suite and expected her to continue onto her suite. When I saw her at the door, I checked the doormat as I thought maybe she went to a neighbor's, but it was my doormat. The neighbors don't even have a doormat. My heart was racing when I entered my suite and I searched the entire place. My dogs didn't seem to sense anything either. I didn't see her face but I think she had a hooded house coat on and I was waiting for her to sense us behind her and say hello as usual but instead she turned into my apartment. She almost seemed like a robot when she did so. I don't know. I'm still unnerved by it. It's like the path changed from one day to the next. 
One day, I went to spend a weekend with some friends at another friend's house, which was in a very isolated spot in the middle of the forest, in a village of the Portuguese countryside. It was a get-together among friends, so we had some alcoholic beverages, but it was still early in the night, so no one was drunk yet. In the middle of the hangout, a friend and I decided to go for a walk in the area and take some Polaroid photos, playing a bit with the flash in the dark. The only access to my friend's house was through a dirt road, so to reach the main road, we had to walk along the dirt path, taking photos along the way. When we reached the main road, we decided to turn left and follow a street that led into a residential area. As soon as we entered that side road, we came across a house that caught both of our attention. Not because there was anything visibly wrong with it, but it just felt like the aura of the house hit us both. We looked at each other and we said exactly that, that the house had just a strange energy. We ignored it and kept walking along a path with a few curves. After walking for about 30 minutes, we started seeing a familiar structure, a bridge that was very close to the entry of the side road that we initially chose. Now, we were a bit confused by this because it felt like we had just made a 360 degree turn and ended up back at our starting point. With this realization, we decided to head back to the house as the atmosphere was getting a bit strange and confusing. The next day, at the end of the day, we decided to go for another walk at night, doing the exact same route as the night before. We followed exactly the same path, we passed by the same mysterious house, and we decided to take a photo of it to remember the moment, considering that we'd taken several other photos along the way. As we moved forward, our perspective of the path seemed very different from just the previous day. This time, there were no left curves, and it looked like there were more bushes. Then, out of nowhere, we realized that the road led to a giant asphalt slope going up to the top of the village and into another residential area. Once again, we were confused by what was happening, and without panicking, we decided to calmly turn back and head home. When we got back to the house, we looked through all of the photos that we'd taken during the walk, and to our amazement, the photo of the mysterious house was the only one that came out completely black. There could very well be a technical explanation for this, but if it was a coincidence, it was a very well-planned one. For me, the strangest part of this experience was the fact that both of us, not just one, were both experiencing these events and the sudden shifts in perspective and energy. And of course, when we got back to my friend's house, we immediately told everyone what had happened. But neither of us could really tell the story coherently, and I'm sure that they just thought we were starting to go crazy. I hope the story fits in this subreddit because aside from it being a glitch in the matrix, I don't have any other explanations. My keyboard simply vanished. My son was off at college and I work from home and I was using his bedroom as my home office. I had bought a very nice computer keyboard in January I mean, I type all day and I'm quite particular. My son was set to graduate in May, so before he came home, I packed up my computer, my monitor, and other stuff. It wasn't much. And I moved it all from the desk in his room to the desk in the family room where I work when he's home. This process took about 10 minutes. When I sat down at the desk in the family room, I had my mouse, but not my keyboard. So, I went back into my son's room to go get it, and it's not there. And I mean, it's big not there. 
It's like an open Ikea desk, so it's not like it just fell behind. I checked on the bookshelves, under his bed, and everywhere possible. It's not in his room, and we've since searched for it several times. So, I think, okay, I must have brought it out and put it down somewhere between the bedroom and the family room. But I can't find this thing anywhere. I even checked a few boxes where it shouldn't be, and, of course, it wasn't there. I understand this may sound fake or like a coincidence, but it's not. How in the heck did I lose an entire full-sized keyboard moving just a few things 30 feet? Every other thing that I moved was right there where I placed it when I moved everything over. This was in May, and there's still no sign of this keyboard. I have literally checked in everything and under everything more than once, and there's no sign of it. My wife was the only other person living here at the time, and she wasn't even home, and I was not under the influence of any substance. Reappearing Shoes I was reading through some stories here and was reminded of this story that I still have no explanation for. This happened about five years ago, but I will never forget how insanely confused I was. I also want to note that I'm not a stranger to glitches happening and have witnessed several cars disappearing with nowhere to have gone, items disappearing and reappearing in the most obvious place, etc. So the story. I was on a camping trip with my family in Biloxi, Mississippi, and we took a drive to the beach. We parked in a parking lot and had to cross a busy street before coming up to a wooden bridge slash path that led to the sand. As my family and I approached the end of the path, all of the beachgoers had their shoes lined up against the railing. I remember slipping out of my shoes and hoping that they wouldn't be stolen or accidentally taken by someone else as they were pretty generic and as I stated, everyone's were all just piled together. My family and I went on about our beach day. We went swimming, played in the water, and I know for a fact that no one from my little group left to go back to the car, and we all stayed together the entire time. Not only that, but my siblings were too young to cross the street alone at that time, and my dad has never pulled any pranks. As we were leaving, and we approached the pile of shoes, lo and behold, my shoes were gone. They were a cheap pair of flip-flops, so I wasn't heartbroken, but it was quite annoying as I had to walk across the busy street and through the parking lot in my bare feet. I remember stepping on rocks the whole way and mildly complaining because, I mean, it was quite painful. Then, when I got back to the car, my shoes were neatly placed directly outside of my car door as if I had opened the door, placed my feet on the ground, and just slipped out of them. If it were a prank, it couldn't have been done by my family, so this random quote-unquote prankster would have had to know, one, which shoes were mine, two, which car was mine, and three, which door of that car I had gotten out of. And I know for a fact that I didn't leave them there myself due to how uncomfortable the walk was barefoot, as well as having thought that I hoped my shoes wouldn't go missing in that pile. I was happy to have them back, but totally annoyed that it wasn't before the miserable walk across those rocks. Glitch with customers at work. I'm a barista at a coffee shop, and this shift that I had a couple of days ago threw me for a loop. So, I was taking an order from these two gentlemen at our walk-up window. The first guy ordered a drink, and I asked if he wanted whipped cream on it. He said, nah, that's okay, I'm sweet enough already. 
Now, I've worked here for over five years, and I've heard many quips, but I hadn't heard that one before, so it stuck out in my mind. I laughed, and then I took his friend's order. Now, for some context, we have speakers inside the building and outside that we can Bluetooth music through, and I'm a big 21 Pilots fan, so that's what I was playing. The second guy asked me, did you pick this music? As opposed to a corporate office handpicking playlist for us or whatever. And I said yes, and he mentioned that he was a big fan of the band also. And let it be known that I was wearing a band tee of theirs, but he didn't comment on that. I don't know if he didn't realize it or what. But here's where it gets kind of weird. Not 30 minutes later, I'm outside taking orders in our drive-thru again. One car has two guys in it, and the driver orders a drink. I ask if he wants whipped cream. He says, yeah, only a little though. I'm sweet enough already. And in the moment, I laugh it off, but in my head, I'm thinking how weird of a comment that is to have two separate customers say within less than an hour. No hesitation. This guy gestures to my shirt and says, Oh, 21 Pilots, right? I'm a big fan myself. Again, I laugh it off in the moment, and I talk about the band with him, but inside I was like, What is going on? And let it be known, all these guys that I mentioned were in all different age demographics too. It was so weird. Love Vigilantes A friend of mine, we'll call him Doug, owns a split-level house in a suburb of Dallas. Every time me and a mutual friend of mine would visit, we would experience strange things. Doug would laugh us off, though. He wasn't superstitious, and he didn't believe in those kinds of things. It is odd to note, though, that he has been the house's only owner and no one has ever died there. Using an online database, whose name currently escapes me, I was able to see an aerial view of the land going back many years, and no other structure stood on that plot for generations. One night, the three of us were upstairs listening to music. I glanced over, and for a split second, I saw a man upstairs. He was blonde and dressed as what I would assume to be a World War II soldier. I screamed. The guys looked, they saw nothing, and they thought I was nuts. Later that night, me and the mutual friend were laying in the guest bed in the dark, just talking. Suddenly, my phone starts playing Love Vigilantes by New Order. I love New Order, but I've never played that track specifically. In the morning... Our mutual friend looked up the lyrics, and it's about a man who comes home from the war, only to discover that he's actually a ghost. I wasn't sure what to make of this. Was what I saw a ghost? And the song that played on my phone automatically? Was that just a coincidence? missing plane? I work as a massage therapist in a building next to a small airport. My office has a beautiful view of the airport runway. The airport is active mostly with little planes and the occasional big jets, but I don't see the big ones very much. I always get a little frustrated when the jets come by, especially when ending a session because they're very loud and they can disturb from the session. One day, I was ending a session when I heard and saw a jet coming down the runway, preparing for takeoff. I watched it whistle as it passed by, knowing that I didn't have enough time to end the massage by the time that it took off. I waited and waited and waited. To my surprise, I was actually able to end the massage. I went out to the balcony next to my office to investigate 
and the plane was gone. Completely gone, without a trace. Now there's literally no way that it could have taken off and I not see it or hear it. I felt insane. I think about this now, months later, and I still scratch my head and wonder what the heck happened. The light switches changed controls. This happened about a year ago, when I moved into my current place. There's a set of light switches in the main room that has a 2x2 two two layout. The switches on top and underneath them is a dimmer and a fan dial. When I first moved in, my brother was here helping unpack and decorate, and we talked a couple of times about how it was weird that they put the dimmer light switch above the fan dial and the fan light switch above the dimmer dial. One time, I even stood there demonstrating it, and there was absolutely no denying that the switches were backwards. Well, of course, one day, after months of living here, I went to turn the fan light off, switched the switch above the dimmer, and the dimmer light turned on. Now, the way I froze, I switched the one above the fan dial and the fan light turned off. I, I must have stood there for 15 minutes switching them on and off. I've never felt that kind of disbelief and unreality before. My brother doesn't like to talk about it. Sentimental toy got taken, but then reappeared two months later. Hi. This is something weird that both my boyfriend and I experienced two years ago, and we still can't explain it to this day, so here's some background context. Two years ago, we went to the Santa Monica Pier and played at the arcade, and with the tickets that we won, we picked out two stuffed animals. We collect silly little trinkets and we love cute things. One was a cute lamb and one was a hedgehog that looked so insanely messed up. It looked like a child tried drawing it from memory. It was so silly and stupid looking and we loved the thing. We actually named him Manny. A couple months later, we were leaving the country to go overseas for a month and the morning of our flight to leave, our cat peed on our bed and it got on Manny. It also got on one of our pillows and a blanket. We put it all in the washer, but the thing is that we were going to get the washer replaced in a couple days. We lived with his family, so his sister who was staying behind knew that we put our stuff in the washer, even though it wasn't going to work well, but we were still just freaked out about Manny and said that she'd put it in the dryer for us when it was done. So we left, but we were still anxious about Manny getting destroyed. A couple of days later, we asked his sister if everything was okay with our stuff, and she said she completely forgot to take their stuff out of the washer, and the people who replaced the washer already took it and put in a new one. We were freaking out because our stuff got taken and we didn't know if we'd be able to get it back, especially Manny. The sister tried calling the company, but they said they didn't see anything in the washer, so we thought that maybe the sister just misplaced it. She looked everywhere, but she couldn't find it, and she knew that no one took the stuff out before they took it. My boyfriend was heartbroken. He loved that stupid thing so much a reverse image searched it and literally nothing came up, not even like anything similar at all. So then I look at the tag that was in the photos and I emailed the company on there and asked them if they had more of that specific hedgehog stuffed animals. I even sent them a picture of it so that they knew exactly which one I was talking about and they said that they had it and that they would mail it to us. We were thrilled. We come back home from our trip and also turned the entire house upside down. 
I'm telling you, we looked absolutely everywhere. Even his family helped too, and our stuff could not be found. We get the stuffed animal delivered from the company, and it was nowhere near the same as Manny. We didn't want to bother them more because they already sent it to us for free, but we were super disappointed. A month after we came back, I went to bed before my boyfriend, as I always do. He's always a night owl, so he wasn't tired whatsoever. And he wakes me up in the middle of the night, and he says, Hey, Manny's back. And I was still kind of half asleep, so I was like, what? He said, I went into the laundry room, and he was just sitting on top of the dryer. Now, I was super confused still, since it was late at night, but he led me to the laundry room, where there was Manny perfectly dry, perfectly clean, but I noticed that he didn't smell like laundry detergent or anything. He was just there, sitting on the dryer. I freaked out, and he freaked out too, because we knew that that thing was not in our house. Our room is also by the laundry room, and no one went in there at all that night or that day except for us. The next morning, We asked everyone in the house, and they all said that they didn't put him there, and that they didn't see or hear anything. We also never ended up getting our pillow or blanket back, only Manny. So we were kind of creeped out, but mostly happy, because Manny was back, so we ended up putting him somewhere that our cat can't reach him, since apparently this stupid-looking, one-of-a-kind hedgehog plush is irreplaceable. We still joke to this day that he just went to where we vacationed after us because he didn't get the memo on what actual dates we were going to be gone. Anyways, yeah, we can't explain it. I know it's a silly situation about a stuffed animal, especially relative to all the other more dramatic stories on this sub. I hope this is considered a glitch or else I totally put it in the wrong subreddit. Lost badge. So this all happened like two days ago, but I'm still getting chills thinking about it now. I'm at work and I'm losing everything that day, like my keys, my badge, my phone, you name it. I'm having a real off day and everyone is telling me that they can notice. (laughs) I'm able to find everything else except for my badge. It's a whole ordeal. I gotta tell my supervisor and he's telling me that I gotta call our higher ups so that they can deactivate it and blah blah blah. I'm stressed and overwhelmed at this point, so I'm just like, you know what man, screw it. I accept that it's lost, let's just move forward with disabling it and get in with the process of getting a new one. I felt defeated after searching for it for hours, so it's deactivated now and I got a temporary badge and I'm back at our building doing a 360 outside looking for it in the last place that I remember using it. And this is where it gets weird. I go to grab my temp badge from my pocket to badge in at the door and boom, my original one is sitting right there in my pocket like it was never disappeared in the first place. And I was like, what the F man? I'm losing my mind at this point. I got chills because I checked every pocket a bajillion times, so I was so confused how that could have happened. This led me to Google if anyone had any similar experiences to my glitch, and I'm happy that I found this Reddit page, and that I'm not the only one that's going through these unusual events. Dad's pocket knife disappeared and reappeared. The resolution to this happened yesterday, but I'm still confused as to how we even got here. Here's some backstory. My dad passed away last year in June, and my mom passed away later that year in December. 
one of the things that I received while driving things up with my sister was a small silver-colored pocket knife. Nothing expensive or fancy, just some promotional item with a business name and a phone number stamped on the side. But it was part of Dad's everyday carry, and that made it special to me. A month or so ago, I slipped Dad's knife into the pocket of my shorts and ran some errands. But when I got home, it was missing. Since my errands only involved getting out of the car at one stop, I immediately returned to that stop to look for it. No luck. Thinking that it fell out of my pocket while I was sitting in the truck, I searched under the seat and on the floor. Nothing. Even at home, I turned literally every pocket out of my shorts inside out to no avail. My wife even checked the pockets before laundering the shorts, because I do have a habit of leaving stuff in my pockets, and still nothing. I was crushed. Yesterday, I grabbed those shorts to wear, and I felt something as I was putting them on. It was the knife, sitting in the pocket that I remember last putting it in, as if nothing ever happened. I have no idea how it was missed by two people and survived being laundered, drying, folding, and being put away without it being discovered. It is small, but it has some weight to it still. Enough weight that you can tell it was there just by simply holding the shorts, which is how I discovered it when putting on the shorts. Honestly, I'm just glad to have it back. JBL cord changed. All of my electronics have USB-C charging ports except for my Kindle and a wireless JBL speaker that both use the outdated micro USB. A short 3-inch micro USB bright orange charging cord came with the speaker, which was perfect because my long gold micro USB charger for my Kindle had crapped out. So, this orange JBL one, that has JBL engraved on it by the way, is the only cord that I use to charge my speaker and my Kindle. I just used it to charge my Kindle last Friday before a trip to Kansas. Anyway, my speaker battery was low today, so I went into the drawer in my kitchen where I keep my charging cords, and the orange JBL cord is my only micro USB cord. Yet, today, I pull it out, and it's no longer a micro USB, but a USB-C cord like the rest of my chargers. I own no other JBL products where I'd have an additional JBL charger. This charger was in the designated spot in my charging drawer for the speaker slash Kindle charger, and I've been the only one home all week. This feels impossible. Somebody asked, I'm super curious as to whether the speaker now sports a USB-C port. OP says, it doesn't. That's how I discovered this. I was trying to put it in and charge it, but it wasn't working. I turned the charger around to look at it, and it was now USB-C. My speaker input still is micro USB. I even turned the speaker around and looked all over to see if maybe there were two different charging ports and I had just missed one, but no. Infinite Nightly Mosquito Glitch This is not super serious and mostly funny, but it's become concerning now that it's been occurring for two straight weeks. Every night, my routine is the same. I clean up the kitchen, go to the bathroom to get ready for bed, and take off my makeup, and I encounter the mosquito. I live in the desert, and for most of my life, we didn't have mosquitoes. Common sense, considering it's dry as hell, and our temperatures are currently in the upper 90s and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But two weeks ago, as I was washing my face, I heard that little 
telltale buzzing near my ear. Okay, whatever. It's one mosquito. I spend like five to seven minutes trying to locate it in my bathroom, and then I kill it. I always make sure that it's dead because I've been to tropical countries before, and waking up with mosquito bites on my face is an absolute nope. I'm also a bit of a sadist, maybe, because I always inspect my work after it's done. Like checking the abdomen to see if there was any blood in it. You know what I'm talking about. I haven't gotten any mosquito bites, so maybe this one was just pathetic and I got to it before it could get to me. I go to bed and I forget about the mosquito. Until the same thing happens the next night. I'm washing my face and I think I hear a noise, so I stop the water and I listen. Lo and behold, another mosquito. At this point, it didn't really weird me out too much, which is crazy because it happened twice but totally a possible coincidence, right? All the lights were off in the house except for the bathroom, so it made sense that the mosquito would follow me to the light source. It probably smelled me or however mosquitoes sense blood nearby. And then it happened again, and then again, for two weeks. I just got out of the bathroom before I started this post, and I was like, okay, this is starting to get weird. The thing is, it's only ever one mosquito. I've never seen two at the same time. It comes at the same time every single night, which is around one or two in the morning. It's my get ready for bedtime. Every night, I shut off the two doors in the bathroom and spend a few minutes cornering it and killing it. Every single time, it's dead, and I confirm that. Tonight was weird in particular because there were multiple other lights on in the house at the time before I went to turn them off. But it always targets the bathroom. Maybe because it's moist in there? I don't know. Why doesn't it go in there at any other time of the day? It's literally only at night and the exact time that I'm in there. My brother hasn't noticed it and my sister hasn't either. It's not like the bathroom is absolutely dark or anything. We have a small lamp in there that gives off light at all times, so it very well could go in there if it wanted water to lay its spawn or something. It's not laying eggs in the toilet because I'm a germ-fearing person and I always keep the lid lowered until it's needed. It doesn't have any other sources of water in the house, aside from maybe the drain of the sink after I've finished using it and I've checked to make sure. I actually have no clue how one singular mosquito keeps showing up. I haven't gotten any bites these past few weeks, and my bedroom is right across from the bathroom where I sleep with my door open and no blanket. Unless these mosquitoes are breeding invalid children that lack the ability to consume human blood, I can't see a reason how there would be an infinite mosquito population that just sends one lad in after another has been compromised, but doesn't draw any blood. Is the mosquito a Sisyphean subject, or am I Sisyphus? We are each other's infinite cycle of hell, and I swear it's respawning and headed straight for its death every time because it gets neuralized MIB style right before it comes back to life. In all seriousness, Please help me come up with an explanation because I have zero clue whatsoever. Me and all of my friends were in a different, parallel dimension. I don't really know how this is possible, and I hope somebody has an explanation for this. We're ninth graders and there's a program in our school where only 10 people can participate. You could sign up if you wanted to. It was optional. Basically, you would sign up and go to the university close by to attend lectures on biophysics during the fourth class instead of going to art. I signed up, of course, and so did my friend. We signed up four weeks ago. The university is this big castle. It's like really old. 
and the inside is old too. The first time we went there, we had a chill 20 minute lecture, and then we left. The second week, we went to room 213 on the second floor, but the lecturer didn't show up and the door was locked. We found out later that the lecturer was sick that day. Now, today is the third week. My friend and I met up and we went to the university from our school, which is maybe two kilometers away. The lecture was supposed to start in a small classroom at 10.55 and our third class ended at 10.35, so we had 20 minutes to get there. We arrived at the university near the door at exactly 10.50. I remember this clearly. The door was still locked. I looked out the window to see if anyone was coming, but no one was in sight. About a minute later, two of our classmates arrived. We sat in the hallway chairs to wait, and there was also an old man painting the walls white while standing on a ladder. At 10.55, the lecturer arrived and unlocked the door. We went in, and two minutes later, two more classmates came in as well. About four people were absent. The lecturer didn't lock the door in case someone else arrived late. The lecture lasted about 20 minutes, and afterward, we returned to school. As I was walking... I decided to check the class group chat, which I usually keep muted because there's a lot of off-topic conversation. I saw messages from a classmate who didn't come to the lecture and some other girls asking if the lecture was even going to happen. They had decided to go home because they thought that it wouldn't. I replied that the lecture did happen. The classmate who missed the lecture said that when he checked, the door was locked and no one was inside the room. This, this is where things get weird. Back at school, our friend asked why we didn't tell them that the lecture happened. I hadn't looked at the chat because I'd keep it muted. I explained that my friend and I were there at 10.50, checking if the door was locked and looking out the window. My friend was confused because he said that at exactly 10.50, he also checked to see if the door was open. We were both checking at the same time. At 10.55, the lecturer unlocked the door for us, but my friend said that, that at 10 <laughs> said that at 10.55, when he checked again, the door was still locked for him. He even double-checked that he was at the right room, and he was. 2.13 yet the door was locked. To tell his side of the story, at 10.50, when he arrived at 2.13, the hallway was empty, and he didn't hear anyone walking or making any noise at all. He tried to open the door, but it was locked. He then went to the third floor to see if any classmates were there, but no one was. At 10.57, he returned to the second floor and checked the door again, and it was still locked. He didn't hear anyone talking or walking in the hallway, so he left the university. Now, from my perspective, at 10.50, I was with my friend checking if the door was locked, and it was. I looked out the window at 10.47 to see if anyone was coming, but no one was there. At 10.50, we saw the old man on the ladder painting the walls, and at 10.55, the lecturer arrived and unlocked the door. We went inside, and at around 10.57, our other classmates came in. To sum it all up, my friend, the lost classmate, didn't see anyone at the university. He didn't see us at the exact same time, and he didn't see the old man on the ladder. And he didn't see our other classmates walking upstairs at 10.57 as he was walking downstairs. If you think he was making this up, the girls who were with him confirmed his whole story. So, I believe it's true. 
He double checked the room and it was the correct one, 213. And it had the same big table in the hallway as well. He was in the same place as we were at the same time, yet he didn't see us or hear us. And we didn't see him or hear him or the other girls either. Neither of us could hear each other walking the stairs or talking. This makes me think that we were in some sort of parallel world or a multiverse. I would really, really like an explanation. Oh, and I forgot to add, at around 10.55, he was checking if the door was locked, but at the exact same time, we were inside the classroom and the door was unlocked. And we never heard him try to open it. There's one thought that keeps bothering me. What if I had looked at the chat at 10.55 and sent him a picture of me and my friends at the door, and he sent one back of him and his classmates at the same door? Halloween Bumblebee This happened two years ago at a Halloween party that I hosted in my college apartment. Every time I'd tell someone this story, their reactions would either be in disbelief or they would just straight up laugh. My party was to start at 7 p.m. and some of my friends sent me a message saying that they were on their way. They were just pre-gaming at another friend's house. A couple minutes have passed. Me, my sister, and two other friends were getting ready upstairs when we heard my front door unlock and it sounded like someone was entering my house. I excitedly took a peek from the third floor looking down the first and my friend and I saw what looked like our other friend in a bumblebee costume walking down from the second floor to the first. I yelled out his name and I told him to come upstairs and chill with us, but he ignored us. Now, me being excited and all, I ran all the way to the first floor to catch up with him and ask him to come up again. Well, when I went downstairs, no one was there and my door was locked and it didn't seem like anyone had entered at all. It also felt extremely cold, even though I had my windows closed and the heater on, as if there was some sort of presence there. Before coming to uni, I've lived in a haunted home in the Philippines for years, so I know what it's like when there's a presence or an entity around. The hairs on the back of my neck raised when I called my friends to ask if they stopped by or whatever, and they said that they haven't even left, and they were still pre-gaming. To top it off, nobody else in my friend group has a copy of my keys, so it was beyond impossible for them to even enter. I thought I was the only one that was imagining things, but my friend pulled me over and asked me if I saw what he saw too. Getting and giving a Halloween fright. Around Halloween of 2010 or 2011, I'm in Texas living in an apartment with my then girlfriend who grew up Jehovah's Witness. She's never celebrated a birthday, let alone the best holiday of the year. But now that she's living by her own rules, she's up for some new experiences. She wants to wear a costume, walk the neighborhood streets, see some spooky stuff, the whole nine yards. Halloween is my favorite time of the year, so I'm more than happy to be the one to introduce it. The day of we get our costumes. Nothing crazy. She paints her face up in zombie or some kind of ghoul-like fashion, and I decide to go with those little latex pieces you glue to your face and blend in with some flesh-tone paint. 
It comes out great. Better than I could have hoped, actually. I got one on my forehead that looks like a deep cut. Another one that looks like a big hole has been ripped out of my cheek. I drip some of that gelatinous fake blood that stays in place and looks fresh for hours. It looked real. We both admire it for the next few hours before the sun starts setting and then we hit the streets. Our apartment complex is surrounded by neighborhoods, so we got plenty of residential streets to walk down. We're having a great time looking at all the house decorations and all the kids wearing costumes and she's loving it. So much that she's ready to take it to the next level. She wants to go a few blocks up to the cemetery. And I'm like, yeah, that's a Halloween thing. Let's go. To get there, we have to walk a little ways on a street that's pretty busy. And it's extra busy this night. There's no sidewalk, just a bike lane that's wedged between the road and the grassy hill. We're walking against traffic. The sun is gone and it's just blinding yellow lights whooshing past us every three seconds. The bike lane is steady getting more narrow and we're moving gradually up onto the hill. Her walking just a few paces ahead of me and me starting to think that this is getting a little sketchy. We're going along and we're stuck walking at the edge of this steep hill and the busy road when suddenly... I hear the rev of an engine. Two headlights coming our way suddenly turn into four as a big Ford F-250 tries to go around the slower car in front of it. The truck tries to move around it on the bike lane. Like all those Ford models, it has the extended side mirrors that stick out like two feet. I'm watching my girlfriend ahead of me as its passenger side mirror slams into her right shoulder and spins her around. The mirror explodes into a million little pieces of plastic and glass. And I'm like, holy crap. I run up to her. She's still standing, kind of dazed, and I'm asking her if she's okay and she's just nodding her head. I'm thinking, maybe she doesn't feel it yet and I'm terrified to look, but... I gently pull her sweater to the side to check her shoulder. A faint bruise forming is all I see. She's talking now, and after another minute of questioning, it seems that she really is fine. I realize they probably make those mirrors to explode on impact for this... this very reason. In the meantime... The driver of the truck has pulled over with his hazards on a little down the way from where we came. We both walk over there, both of us still kind of dazed and shook from fear. The driver gets out. He's a Mexican guy, doesn't know a lot of English and just keeps saying no insurance in a kind of have mercy on me tone. My girlfriend made it up to the truck first, so he's really just kind of saying it to her. When I emerge from the darkness is when it starts to get weird. And a little funny, in hindsight. He's still mumbling to her about no insurance, and she's saying something about he needs to be more careful. He finally looks at me, and he stops talking completely. I see his eyes really studying my face while his turns white as a bedsheet. I'm really too freaked out from what just happened to put it all together. I am, however, outwardly calm. My girlfriend seems fine. She's talking, moving, breathing. And eventually, I'm okay enough to kind of start smiling to try to take the edge off of our new Mexican friend and make him feel less freaked out, too. We stand by the truck for a few minutes, me and her, just like, oh well, I guess we're good. The guy, meanwhile, still just dead set on me and not saying anything. He can't understand us anyway. He doesn't speak English. 
Me and her look at each other and we mutually feel the situation has run its course. We tell him goodnight and then we walk off into the night. A little later, we're rehashing what took place, especially wondering why he was acting so weird. It's only then that we recover our senses and remember just how good my prosthetics look. The guy probably didn't have time to see who he hit with that mirror. He probably had the scariest roller coaster ride of emotions when she first came up and seemed fine, only for me to then pop out looking like I tried shaving with a lawnmower. And then the way I was standing there, smiling, saying, It's all right, buddy, don't worry about it. It was both the most scared I'd ever been on Halloween and the most I ever scared someone else. Has anyone experienced something like this? Something that happened to me earlier this year boggles my mind to this day, so I want to share it here. Hopefully, maybe hear about some similar stories. So my cousin and I were waiting for my mom to pick us up outside the grocery store. We were sitting on a bench and waiting for her to pull up with the car. Fifteen minutes later, both of us saw my mom drive by, but she didn't stop to pick us up. Basically, just drove along the street and we stood all confused and then I started calling her because what the heck? And she told me that she hadn't even left to pick us up yet. Then, I checked her location because she shares her location with me and I saw that she wasn't even close to where we were, so it couldn't have been her that drove by, but I know that I saw her drive by earlier and my cousin saw her too. It was just her and the exact same car that she drives. So was that some parallel universe thing going on or a glitch? It's also the first time something so unusual has happened to me, so... Yeah, it haunts me a lot. We get some additional insight from someone in the comments that says, What you saw might be what in Scandinavian folklore is called a bardoger, or what we Finns call, and I'm gonna butcher this, an etiainen, which is a being or phenomenon announcing someone's arrival in advance, looking or sounding exactly like them. Usually, they're considered harmless, not sinister like doppelgangers or mimics. Was someone in my house, or am I experiencing mental issues? Something odd happened today and I want to put it out there to see if anyone else can come up with a logical explanation. I live in a house with my mom and my dog. Earlier today, my mom left the house and went out. I heard her leave, so I'm now alone in the house with the dog. About 20 minutes later, I went downstairs to put some dirty clothes in the washing machine I put the clothes and the detergent in, I closed the door and turned the machine on. The machine has a dial that you turn to select your desired washing setting, and then you press the on button. It definitely started washing because I heard it make the usual noises and I saw the clothes start to spin inside the machine. I then got my dog ready to go on a walk, left the house, locked the doors, and went to walk my dog. Now, when I got home an hour later, my mom was still out, by the way, and had not come home yet. This is 100% confirmed. The washing machine was turned off. Not in the sense that the cycle had finished, but the dial had physically been turned to the off setting. I double-checked, and the clothes inside were still soaking wet, meaning the cycle hadn't finished 
and the machine was turned off mid-cycle. I don't know. I have zero explanation for this. The dial doesn't turn itself automatically as it's not that type of machine. The only explanation that I can think of is either someone else is or was in the house while I was out and switched it off. And this is scary because only my mom and I have keys to the house or I myself switched it off which is not something I would have chosen to do as it was literally mid-cycle washing my clothes and I have no memory whatsoever of doing so. Both of these are very scary to me. I mean, obviously, the possibility of someone else being in the house is terrifying, but also the fact that I may have subconsciously performed an out-of-character action and have no memory whatsoever of doing it also scary. Does anyone else have a possible explanation? Please note, I'm a 29-year-old female, physically healthy, although I could go to the gym a little bit more often, and have never been formally diagnosed with mental health issues. Like I'd been upstairs the whole time. I tried to post this earlier this year, but didn't have enough karma. I'm excited that I get to now because I've never met anyone with a similar experience until I found this group. Around Christmas, 2023, I had put my son down for a nap in his playpen in the playroom downstairs. I went into the living room, sat on my couch, and started watching The Office on TV and folding laundry. When I was finished, I pulled my blanket over me and lay down on the pillow that my son had brought into the living room earlier that morning. I dozed off soon after. A short time later, I woke up to my baby crying. I remember looking out the window and wondering how long I'd been asleep because it was dark outside. I checked my phone that was plugged into the charger on the arm of the couch for the time. It was almost seven. I specifically remember looking at the Christmas tree as I walked by. I walk back to the playroom, the changes diaper. I walk into the kitchen to throw away the diaper and make him a bottle. And after I gave him his bottle, I walked back into the living room to lay down on the couch. But my pillow and my blanket were gone. The laundry was still folded beside the couch, and it looked untouched. Even my phone was gone. I looked in all the rooms that I had gone in, and even the bathroom, and thought it must have fallen in the couch. Around that time... My boyfriend was getting home from work, and I asked him to call my phone because I couldn't find it. I heard it ringing upstairs in our bedroom. Now, I hadn't been upstairs at all, and I was kind of freaked out at this point. Me and my boyfriend go up to our bedroom to find my phone plugged up to the charger beside my bed. And on the bed was my blanket and my pillow as if I was asleep in my bed the whole time. I was so confused because I know for a fact that I never walked up or down those stairs and the TV in the living room was still on the office. I still think about it all the time and the only way that I can make sense of it is just me having experienced a glitch. My hoodie. My favorite hoodie has been missing for three weeks or so. My apartment is very neat and organized. There's no laundry piled up. The kids' rooms are as clean as a whistle. There's nothing under the beds. I searched my place from top to bottom, and a friend who was over did the same. No hoodie. 
I remember taking it out of my locker at work, and try as I might, I couldn't definitively remember taking it inside. But I walk home from work, it's a seven minute walk, and I don't stop anywhere. I grab my things from my locker and just go. So I've been very confused about how the hoodie could be lost. Yesterday morning, I get up and my hoodie is under my bed. Under the corner of the bed in the middle of the room, not any of the corners touching the walls. I'd looked under my bed repeatedly and so had my friend. I've vacuumed the entire room, including under the bed, since the hoodie's disappearance. There's no way that it's been under there and I haven't seen it. I feel crazy and confused. Hey, it's me. If you have a favorite hoodie, tell me about it in the comments. The corner store reappears. I used to live in an apartment near a corner store on the edge of town. I was very familiar with it and went there often. It was closed down a few months after I moved somewhere about a mile away. And I remember because it was still the closest store to where I lived. I remember my roommate telling me the store closed down. I was disappointed because now we had to walk a little bit further down the road to the next gas station to get snacks and beer. It was July. I even saw that all of the equipment from inside the store was lined up outside to be taken away or something. It was about August when I walked past it again, and it was rubble. I could now see the buildings behind the store and I remember thinking about that being the closest public restroom to my house, too. I continued on past what used to be the corner store to the next one down the road. I saw a friend of mine the same day, and I told him that they tore down the old store, too. I didn't walk that way for a couple of months after that, and I hadn't walked that way until this October. When I did... I was very shocked and confused when I saw the building still there in its original condition. There's no way that I could have mistaken it for another building. Nothing else in the area was torn down or rebuilt. I got kind of mad, honestly, because of how blatant of a change that is. I decided not to ask my friend if they remember me telling them about the store being rubble because I really don't want to know the answer. We have some wisdom in the comments that says, have you looked back on Street View? Some areas are sampled quite frequently. If anything like that ever seems to happen, and this person is not just talking to the OP, they say to gather evidence, take pictures, video, get souvenirs, talk to people. Of course, we can't know that this store would reappear, but there are a ton of stories here where a place just seems to inexplicably close and then come back. Get some proof, even if just for your own memories. My experience paying too much attention at a fast food job. Before I dive into this story, I want to clarify that I'm not just imagining things or missing details. I'm hyper aware of my surroundings and I pick up on every little thing that I focus on. It's a bit of a curse, honestly, since I can't seem to turn it off. Many things that I've encountered seemed supernatural at first, but after thinking about them, I usually find logical explanations. Still, some experiences just don't make sense. I've been working at a fast food chain for two and a half years, part-time before I graduated, and now full-time, including past summers. 
I've seen things that genuinely defy explanation. I'll start with some minor oddities and build up to the stranger events. For starters, customers always arrive in waves. Our restaurant is right next to a busy freeway, surrounded by casinos and malls, so there's non-stop traffic outside, sometimes bumper to bumper. You'd expect the customer flow to be random, but it's not. They only ever come in waves, usually groups of three or five. Outside of the early morning, it's never just one customer unless it's one of our regulars. It's like a, it's like a bizarre pattern, almost like something out of Plants vs. Zombies. I'll get into a specific story about this soon. The customers in these waves are often totally mismatched, both in appearance and behavior. Picture this, an older white woman driving, a 12-year-old passenger in the seat, and a middle-aged man in the back. It's always an odd mix, and no matter how cheerful or helpful I am, they're usually irritated and passive-aggressive. I try to provide the best customer service that I can, greeting them, communicating clearly, and wishing them well, but 9 out of 10 customers still seem annoyed, and some even go out of their way to get under my skin. One of the strangest things is when they just get lost. This usually happens when only one customer is in line. They pull up to the menu, place a complicated and expensive order, and I tell them to pull forward to the window, and then nothing. We have CCTV camera in the drive-thru, which lets us monitor cars the whole way through. The drive-thru is enclosed, with high curbs on either side, and a chain-link fence, or at least some trees, running along the edges. They can't just disappear. If they backed out, we'd see them, or at least hear a beep on the headset, yet somehow, they're just gone. This happens at least once a month. Customers' behavior also changes based on who's working. It almost seems tailored to annoy whoever's on the headset. I've learned to keep a calm, detached mindset to avoid getting too frustrated, but the more irritated you are, the worse it gets. We have a night manager with a short temper, and as soon as he clocks in, we're bombarded with difficult customers. However, when I'm working with another manager who's into spiritual stuff, like me, our shifts are much quieter. The other day, my mood took a nosedive after a family call, and immediately we got swarmed with customers for hours, all demanding and all difficult. One time, my boyfriend was on the drive through late at night, and a woman came through, ordering a number 9 medium. Immediately after, she ordered again, this time, a number 9 small. Same voice, same woman, just slightly different. At the window, there she was again, the exact same person. It, it was like a doppelganger. What finally convinced me to write all this down was when I started counting the voices at the menu and the heads at the window. Sometimes it's like a chorus of random voices that I call the mumbles that eventually settle into one distinct voice. Or two people will order and only one person will show up at the window. Their behavior also fluctuates with the Schumann residence. I keep tabs on it daily since it impacts my energy. And when the Schumann is off, our customers seem to go haywire. Everything gets turned up to 11. Sometimes, I wonder if the people running these franchises know something that we don't. Our location outperforms every other restaurant on this side of the state, yet management constantly demands we cut staff, refuse to fix things, and create rules that only make things harder. It's like they want to make us miserable, as if they're farming our negative energy.
the Lion Ring Conspiracy. Okay, so, a number of years ago, my brother and I bought a unit for our mother. It's a nice two-bedroom place with a kitchen and a horseshoe-shaped bench with an oven that's seamless with the stovetop, as is the front of the oven all the way to the floor. Now, a few months ago, we had an issue with the fan belt in the oven needing it to be replaced. Here's where it gets weird. About six months after we bought the unit, I went over wearing a brass lion ring and my mom loved it, eventuating in me getting her one. She kept it in her ensuite bathroom next to the sink and I recall seeing it countless times. Mine was kept in the center console of my car. Now, cut to the oven getting repaired. She had to take the oven out for some reason, and what did she find behind the oven? Mom's lion ring, which could have only been left there when they were building the unit. The ring wasn't in the bathroom anymore. We just have to put it down to a glitch. When I talked to the lady that did the repair, she confirmed that it could have only have been left on installation. OP confirms in the comments that the ring is the same ring that mom had the whole time. Same size, same wear and tear, and everything. Teleporting dog? This happened a few nights ago, and I'm still weirded out by it. I'm sitting on the couch, and I hear my dog whining to come in. I let him in. I use the bathroom, which is very close to the back door, a quick pee, and sit back on the couch. As soon as I sit down, I heard my dog whining again probably no more than a minute or so since he came in. I ask my wife if she let him back out. She says no. I open the door. I hear him whining, but he's not at the door. My wife and I check the house. No doggy. <laughs> no dog. We go back outside, hear him whining again, and this time... I found him stuck under the deck with a kid's waiting pool in front of the entrance to underneath the deck. Did this dog teleport under the deck? Did I let a friggin' skinwalker in my house? There's no way to get under there from inside the house, and really the only way is from the mentioned entrance, which is essentially just a hole, which, as also mentioned, had a pretty big object in front of it. He was whining because he was stuck under there. Thankfully, my wife heard me let him in originally because I honestly thought I was losing my mind and imagining scenarios that never actually occurred. It's truly the strangest thing of this kind to ever happen to me. I still don't understand how he got under there. Somebody in the comments says, you should really ask your dog how he got under there. And that is some solid advice. The Gremlins Did It I recently read and commented on a post here about how something had seemingly vanished and after some time was found right where they had looked many times since the item was lost. I stated that I had had similar things happen in my entire life and that I always joked that it was the gremlins, the mythical creatures, not the ones from the movie, that need to use whatever it is and then they'll return it when they're done. Well, cut to today. I needed to find something and it wasn't where it should have been. I looked all over, every single place that I could think of. My friend was here for a bit and he was helping me look, but 
it was nowhere to be found. I had finally given up and told my buddy that the gremlins needed it and I'll get it back eventually. I walked over to the place where it should have been and I looked one more time before I sat down just because I knew that was the last place that I had seen it and my brain just wouldn't let it go. I looked down and it's sitting right where it should have been, on the edge of the table, right where I had looked repeatedly over the previous 20 minutes or so. It was right in the open, not behind anything, and was in plain view of both of us. I told my friend to look, and when he saw what I was pointing at, his jaw dropped, and he looked up at me. How did that happen? We both looked there multiple times. You're standing right there and I just saw that you were looking there. And I know you didn't just reach down and put it there. What the hell, man? The gremlins did it, I'm telling you. I just told someone on Reddit about them yesterday when the same thing happened to them. This is 100% true as best as I can remember it. This kind of thing has happened to me countless times in my 49 years. There's a mention in the comments about the 1980s revival of The Twilight Zone, an episode called A Matter of Minutes, where the premise is that every minute of every day was a separate thing. And a set of people, all dressed in blue and using blue tools, would build the settings for each minute. Sometimes, they would forget a small item, and then that item would be replaced in a different minute. Are we living in a world where gremlins just borrow things whenever they need them? Or are we living in a real life matter of minutes? Bizarre, helpful paper came out of nowhere. I work in the mental health field as a case manager. I have a client who just got admitted to the inpatient unit and I wasn't sure how to contact her in the unit directly since patients have a different number. I worked here for about a year and I had left in July because I was supposed to go into teaching. Well, it didn't work out so I started back up at this job three weeks ago but I've lost pretty much all of those niche contact numbers and resources. I remembered that I had written the IPU patient contact phone line down, it was different than the front desk, on a piece of paper and shoved it into my work phone case. We have little iPhones with the leather cases that have a few slots for cards and a pocket for money. I had turned that case in with my old phone months ago when I had resigned and this was a different one. I remember thinking how old and banged up it was in comparison to my old one which looked much newer. I figured that I'd call the front desk later and just get the number then but I thought to myself, ooh, I wonder what the last person left in here. I opened the side pocket on the case and there was a small slip of paper with the IPU patient contact number. It was mine. My handwriting, my font, my size, and it was written on a torn piece of paper from the IPU because there was typing on the back about staff expectations while on the unit. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful, really, and I don't know if I'm looking out for myself somewhere out there but that was weird, like really, really weird, and I don't have an explanation for it. The Phone In my late teens, one day, I was on the couch while my mom was up and about cleaning. We started talking and ended up getting into a brief argument, to which she took my phone and I went to my room. For around about an hour, 
I was up in my room painting before I returned to my mom. She was on the couch, watching TV at this point, and I came up to her, asking for my phone back. I knew where she would usually hide my stuff, in her drawer, but respected her enough to not grab it myself. She allowed me to retrieve it, and I returned to her while holding my phone. Turning it on, it turned out to be her phone. This didn't make logical sense, as she could have sworn that she was using her phone while I had been in my room. We began looking for my phone, both rooting through her drawer, her room, and the couch until I finally instinctively patted my pocket and found it. I was never close enough to where her phone was in order to grab it, and I never put my phone in my pocket. I vividly remember painting without a reference because I had no technology to find one. At first, she believed that I was playing a prank on her, but eventually, I was able to convince her that I was just as confused. Time loop on drive home? This happened to me two weeks ago. That week, I was working at a barn near my house, just about six kilometers or 3.7 miles away. I drive a Kimco MXU 50cc, so it's pretty slow. On this particular day, I was working an evening shift, so I finished up around 9.30 p.m. I promised to visit a friend who lives nearby, so after work, I headed over. Everything was normal until I left my friend's place at 10 p.m. When I left, it was very dark already. It's Finland so my visibility was pretty limited, but I've driven that road countless times, so I know it like the back of my hand. There's another barn along the route, and I always check to see if there are any cows in the field next to the road. The distance from my friend's house to the point where you can see the barn lights across the field is about one and a half kilometers, or 0.93 miles. Thanks to those lights, you can see the whole barn clearly. It usually takes me about two minutes to get there. And sure enough, after leaving, I reached that barn within two minutes, just as expected. I passed by two houses close to the road just before the barn, impossible to miss. I looked to see if there were any cows close to the road, and I saw two. My headlights briefly illuminated their white fur as I passed. Everything seemed normal. Until 10 minutes passed and somehow I still hadn't reached an uphill section that usually appears right after the barn. Then, after one turn, I saw the same barn lights again. I drove past the same two houses, the same barn, and those same two cows all over again. After that, I finally made it up the hill and the rest of the drive home was completely normal. I don't know, I'm still really confused about what happened. I know I wasn't tired. I mean, I'm usually up late and sleep in, so it wasn't exhaustion. Paint glitch. Hey everyone, long time lurker, fascinated by all things glitchy. Anyway, here's what just happened to me. For some brief context, I'm a bit of an artist, or at least I try, and I'm currently painting the windows next to a friend's front door in a Halloween theme so that she has a little more privacy when people are at the front door. This is my third day on the project. I'm almost done. So, to start, I'm fully sound of mind. It's 10.32 a.m. as I write this, and it happened about five minutes ago. 
I've only had a small breakfast and one cup of coffee. And I say this to speak to my level of headedness and awareness. I'm now at my friend's house trying to wrap up my painting. I dip my paintbrush into more paint and go to apply it to the window. There was a heavy amount of paint on the brush, and as the brush makes contact with the window, a chickpea-sized glob of navy blue paint drops. As I watch the drop leave the paintbrush, it's like everything slows down in slow motion, and I have time to think to myself, oh, crap, I'll have to clean this up. I look down to the concrete floor, and there's no splat of paint to be found. I inspect the surrounding floor, my own self, the window pane that I was painting. I look at my chair. I inspect every possible surface that this drop of paint could have conceivably and inconceivably landed on, and it's nowhere to be found. After my search was ended with inconclusive results, I said to myself, neat, (laughs) and came here to share. Excited to see what you all think. This person provides an update. It's now two days later, and there's still no paint splatter to be found. The project is finished. The clothes that I was wearing have been fully inspected. The floors have been scrubbed, and... I may have accidentally dropped another dollop or two of paint, which did land on the floor as expected. But I'm at such a loss. This is easily the most difficult to argue experience that I've had which aligns with this glitch phenomenon right before my eyes. One person in the comments of this story says, I think it's notable that this happened to you with paint which is something that should have left visible evidence. Usually when I or others drop things, we have to tell ourselves that it must have rolled under something or was somehow blown away. But not this time. Not with paint. Another person chimes in saying, you in a parallel universe must be very frustrated right now, having not dropped a glob of paint at all, but still having to clean it up. (laughs) 